Conan's Purge might have had some upgrades in the Age of War Chapter 4 beta, but us humble exiles also have some new tools to play with, namely the long-awaited Ballista. This giant crossbow is great for defending against the Purge, but how do you get it, and how do you use it? Today, I'll teach you all you need to know. So, without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, how do you actually get your hands on the Ballista itself? It's quite simple, you just have to unlock the Ballista Knowledge in the Knowledge menu. It has a level requirement of 30, and costs 4 knowledge points, and also has a prerequisite of knowing the Engineer Knowledge, which teaches you trebuchets, siege foundations, etc. You will also unlock the crafting recipes for all the Ballista ammo from the Ballista Knowledge, so once you get to level 30, you can unlock it and have it all at the ready. When it comes to actually crafting your first Ballista, there are a couple of steps. Firstly, you'll need to build a Siege Foundation, as the Ballistas will sit atop them. In the same menu in the Building Hammer, you'll find the Ballista itself. It costs 100 shaped wood, 50 iron bars and 100 twine, so not that expensive to be honest. Once you have the resources, you'll be able to snap it onto your Siege Foundation, and your Ballista is in place. To craft the ammo, interact with the front of the Ballista. You'll get the inventory screen and the crafting interface on the right hand side, where you can craft any of the six ammo types. The crafting recipes are on screen now, feel free to pause them if you need to. Some of the ammunition types are fairly expensive, but others are also incredibly cheap, and as we'll see later on, they can be just as viable. So you've crafted your ammo and your ballista is placed, but how does it actually work? Well the ballista has two functional areas. The front, as we've already seen, is the inventory space, and the back is the functional part where you'll actually operate the ballista. From the back, you can angle and turn the ballista in a limited fashion, it feels like there's about 45 degrees worth of wiggle room. If you need to turn it more, you can use the handles on either side of the ballista platform to turn it as you would with a trebuchet. Looking down the firing track, you cannot immediately fire, and you instead will have to charge the ballista. By holding right click or the relevant bind on console, you'll begin to slowly pull the firing pin back. There are notches at regular intervals across the track that you can hear, and these will sort of lock in the ballista charge. Say for example, if you charge the ballista to 55%, it would drop back down to 50% as opposed to dropping down to zero. Damage and range both increase as you charge the ballista, and it takes roughly 8 seconds to charge it to 100%. From there, you are basically ready to go. You hit left click or the relevant console bind to fire, and then as long as you have ammo selected and in the ballista's inventory, you can recharge the ballista and fire off another round. Delving a little deeper into the ammo types, you can get balls or bolts in stone, iron and star metal, and the balls and bolts have different purposes. The bolts are unit killers, designed to kill groups of enemies. They are able to hit multiple enemies in a row, and they inflict knockback too, and when they're fully charged, they will kill most regular enemies. The bolts are also avatar killers, and according to Dennis, they will kill an enemy avatar in two fully charged star metal bolt hits. The balls are siege tools, designed to be used both in PvE and PvP, doing good point-based damage against structures, though are comparatively ineffective against enemy units. I wanted to test out the damage of every ammo type, however it seems incredibly difficult to properly test as the damage itself for the bolts is quite inconsistent. Bolts fired at the same range into the same target would do different damage numbers for seemingly no discernible reason, and then every so often a bolt would randomly just do like double damage. The star metal bolt is the perfect example, I tested it on the Warmaker as he has a very high health pool, one bolt hit him for around 10k damage, but the next only left him with 400 health, so it hit around 24,000. That same inconsistency was present throughout all bolt types, so any numeric value I try and give you for bolt damage is just going to be wrong because of that massive variance. I don't quite know why it's there, maybe the bolt is doing damage twice because it's counting as penetrating twice? I don't know. Be assured though, the damage of all bolt types is very high, and for PvE purge defence, stone bolts will probably do the job 90% of the time. That being said, the bolts do fairly pitiful damage against enemy structures, even fully charged star metal bolts struggle to do about 7000 damage, so I wouldn't really worry about them too much for structures. On that topic, the balls are designed for destroying structures, and they can do some quite respectable damage to enemies too. I had a star metal ball hit for around 7k, but generally the average is significantly lower than bolts, so even though the damage is, again, alright, I wouldn't use them against enemies. Against structures, however, the damage is much more impressive. 
These results all came from tests against insulated wooden walls at 100% charge. Balls are designed for targeted destruction, used to break down specific wall panels or doors so they're not as effective at clearing structures as trebuchets or explosive jars, but the pinpoint damage they inflict is respectable. When it comes to actually using the ballista, the real usability hurdle is sighting and aiming. The bolts and balls have a pronounced projectile drop and travel time, even at 100% charge, so you'll almost always need to factor that into your decision of where to aim. I was really hoping to give you some good advice on how to sight and gauge your drop, but having fired probably around 100 bolts if not more already, my best advice is just to try it out and get the feeling for it. There's no really useful sighting technique that is actually useful outside of a short range, and without notches or gauges to calculate range on the ballista itself, this is an entirely experience based process, and it's a skill you'll have to develop and get the feel for. I did manage to get this shot whilst I was testing, which I think it's about 30 foundations away from the ballista, and I did manage to track the trajectory, so you can get sort of an impression of how steep the drop is. I wish I could give you something more than that, but there's little else I can say that will actually help, aside from just practice. I definitely recommend doing so with stone bolts as they're so cheap. Just set up a ballista somewhere and just practice hitting wildlife and such. That will probably be the best way to get yourself familiar with the sighting and the projectile drop. So to recap, let's look back at what we've learned about the ballista. You get the recipe by learning the ballista knowledge, costing 4 knowledge points and requiring level 30, and the engineer knowledge as a prerequisite. You then place the ballista through the building hammer onto a siege foundation and you can interact with the front of the ballista to craft ammo and load it. The bolts are designed to be unit killers and will do incredible damage to enemies of all kinds, being especially potent against avatars. Balls do very respectable pinpoint structural damage, great for knocking out wall panels or gates. Ballista bolts and balls both have significant projectile drop and travel time, especially over range, and unfortunately the best way to counteract that is just to practice and develop your own intuition with it. Ultimately, the question I wanted to ask was, are ballistas actually a good and worthwhile addition to the game? Having tried them out for a little while now, I definitely think so. They can be cumbersome with their restrictive viewing angle and the need to turn them using the exterior handles, and there is definitely a big skill curve to understanding where your bolt or ball will go, but I think the reward is well worth it. The Ballista deals very impressive damage both to structures and enemies, and though I can't comment on how well they're balanced against avatars in PvP, their PvE uses to instantly strike down threatening enemies in the Purge, or assist with the raid on Al Mariah or the new camps on Siptar, are very, very useful. Overall though the Ballista, again, can be slightly cumbersome in some aspects, I think it's an invaluable defensive tool to have. And there we have it, everything you need to know about Conan's new Ballista. Thanks for watching and of course a massive thanks to our wonderful esteemed Coffee Cultists for continuing to support the channel over on Patreon. I've really wanted a Ballista in the game for quite a while and I really like the way they've done it. It's simple and easy to use with a decent skill curve and the sound effects on it are incredibly crunchy. Also if you want to see more news for the Age of War Chapter 4 and everything Conan Exiles don't forget to subscribe. Again thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.